Okay, um, Eastern Michigan. Um, it's interesting. They're 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 uh, kind of like us in this sense. Um, they they played good defense the, uh, the first quarter of games. Uh, you think about it, their opponents have have scored no points. <laughs> We've done the same. Uh, they they kind of slow offensively getting started. They've only scored seven points in two games in the first quarter. We've only scored six, but there's some similarities there. When you kind of look at them play, they get operating and going. Um, they, do, they do a nice job defensively. They're big and physical. They, they run to the football, uh, well-coordinated group. Offensively, quarterback does a nice job with the RPO game. They have some talented receivers. Uh, they can run the ball. They throw the ball, and, and, and they run and catch. have some big tight ends as well. They have three big tight ends that are part of the passing game. So. They're, they're a well-rounded football team. They seem, uh, toward the end of the games, they've given up some, some plays, but um, they've been very, very consistent uh, as a defense for the most part. And offensively, uh, the quarterback has enough uh, wiggle room where if you let him get on the edge, he can run some. Those are nice, those are nice deep ball. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're very experienced on defense. They played together for a while. Uh, you can tell that they're very experienced that way. So. This will be a good football game. Be a good, good, good football game for us coming off a tough loss and, and now having to play these guys. It, it's gonna gonna wake us up when you watch the tape. Question. Michelle Carter here. Look, after the game Saturday, Yes. Well, you always feel like maybe one of them, two of them, maybe not so much. Right. But I thought the guys in an environment like that, playing a lot of man to man coverage on some pretty talented players. I mean, you're going to you're going to get a couple of fouls. There. That's just that's the nature of it. When you play man to man, you know that you're going to get them. They're pushing. We're shoving. They're pushing. It's just it goes back and forth. I mean, it just does. It's just football. You see it at any level uh, when you play tight coverage like that. So you can live with some of those. The problem is that there were some some of the fouls were at the wrong time, just unintentional, but at the wrong time where you either stall a drive out on offense, the ones we had, or defensively kept a drive alive. And you can't give a team like we just played a uh, second chance. Their offense is good. You know, I said the defense wore out and um, you, you, could, you could just kind of tell. They played 84 plays counting the penalties, 93. Well, if you play that many plays, um, you're going to give up a couple plays against a good offense. And they had a good offense. And to play that many snaps, you're just asking for trouble. Now, you got to get off the field. I mean, that's part of it, too. You know, you have to get off the field. You can't allow them first downs. Um, but when you give them that many plays, they're a good enough offense. They're going to make some plays on Offense, mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, you mentioned it. Uh, we got behind the chains early on some downs and then didn't convert. And um, we've got to do a better job obviously on third down. When you look at our third down percentage right now, it's not very good. It's like 23%. Um, that's, that's, can't live in that world, no matter who you play. This week, we can't struggle on third downs. We just can't, we gotta, we gotta convert them because then you get a first down, then you get three more plays, you know, and, and, and then you keep your defense off the field and you possess the ball, you have more opportunities. So that's something we've struggled with, you know, that is scoring early, right? I mean, that's, that's two factors in, in games. Our defense has been good enough to keep us in the game, keep us in the game. But you can't keep playing football like that. We have to. We have to get better, and we will. Well, protection obviously when when they 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 put you in the known down and, and you're on the road and, and they can rush you, that becomes a little bit of a problem as well. So, I just think that you know, when all all that's a, all of that stuff's a factor. You know? Answer real simple. 
stay out of third and long. <laughs> Just stay out of them. <laughs> I'm never going to second guess the quarterback. I don't do that. I, I just think that, you know, quarterbacks like Emory, they have instincts and, and he's the guy that wants to sit in the pocket. He'll sit in there, you know, and just try to wait it out sometimes. So I just think that every game presents a, a different problem or result. And you can always say, well, I wish he'd have ran more. Well, okay. And then all of a sudden you, and you don't sit in the pocket and you leave and things come open. So, there's this fine line. I, I think the more he plays and the more he understands our offense and the, and the people in the offense where if it breaks down and some receiver you know, has to come out of his route and do something for him, I think that that's a part of it too. So, it, you know, he, he'll, get, he'll get better. But I thought for the most part, he, he hung in there. I mean, he got hit, got sacked, and he hung in there. I mean, you know, he didn't, he didn't flee, right, as soon as the ball was hyped. You know, he, he sat in there and he said, I want to see this develop. Good for him. He's, he's, a, he's, a, tough, he's a tough quarterback. We would, and, yeah, and that's what always gets you third downs. You know, you have to convert on third downs, and, and we got to do a better job of, of converting those. And our offense knows it. I mean, they, they know it. The players know it. And um, we we got to make sure that when we get in those situations, third and four, less. You know that that got to kind of convert though. You know, just. It's it's hard, but you got to do it. It's just you have to make it happen so you can continue to possess the ball. And, and that's when you play a team like we play, or any team you play this defense. They bring pressure. If you get some third longs, they're bringing five or six guys. You better block them because if you don't, they're gonna get you. And so you want to stay out of it, you know. And, and they do a nice job of sometimes showing pressure, then backing out of there, right? So they play the cat and mouse game uh, with their defense. So, you know, we have to convert third downs. There's no doubt about that. Well, I think obviously, you know, going into a game like that, um, you don't want to try to drop back and throw, you know, you, you want to kind of get it first, first half was kind of okay. And then score in the third quarter. Now you got a feel of the game, right? Because you didn't want it to get away from us too fast. And I've told you guys this before. I know most, most people say, well, you, you, you don't want to go past it. I, want, I just want to win. And if I have to throw 50 passes in a game and they say, well, that's what you got to do to win this game, then we'll throw 50 passes. But I just think you also got to understand who you're facing. What's the opponent like? Right? They kind of have something to do with it too. And you start going three and outs and you keep putting that offense on the field, Eventually, they're going to get you. And they're good enough to do that. And 80-something plays is too much for any defense. You don't want to do I – mean, I think last year, I wanted to see – I think it was last year where somebody we played – I remember we, we almost played 100 plays. Played 95 plays. And I'm like, you can't do that. Was it SC? Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. That's just – you give opportunities opportunity, but you can't give them 90, 90 opportunities, <laughs> right? So you got to get off the field. And that defense, you have to get off the field. That, that's a little bit on YouTube. Coach Michael Caratino, Sideline yes, Sports. Sir. You talk about, obviously, the defense was able to get some turnovers, but usually in the season, the growth of, I mean, offense and defense, but focusing on the defense from week one to week two. I mean, I know you just said the opportunities, but what did you like from the defense, and how did you feel they grew in this game? Well, I, I thought, for the most part, you playing a challenging offense like that to, to be able to, to withstand it in the first quarter and a half of, of the onslaught of, of what it looks like of playing a, a quarterback that's very mobile, that can make some plays with his legs and can extend some plays. And then they've got some talented receivers. Um, to, to, to play in a game like that and to keep it where it was early in that game, it gave us a chance. And that's what we said. We had to, we had to withstand the first 10 minutes of it, right? Of all of that. And I thought offensively, we, we were okay. We, we, we didn't turn the ball over. We moved it, you know, got on the board, wish we could have scored a touchdown, but that wasn't a result. But um, the more we played it, the more you get a feel of the game, right? And the players get a feel of the people they're playing against, and that was important for us. Uh, in the third quarter in that game, I, I thought, you know, I challenged them at, at halftime, hey, we get, get some points on the board, and if we do, 
we got, you know, we got a shot. That's why, you know, most coaches obviously defer because you feel like if you're on the road, you know, our strength going into that game, I felt was our defense. And I said, let's put them out there. Let's put them out there right now and let's figure this thing out so they could get a feel of the game. And then they did a nice job. They did a nice job in the first quarter. They really did. Herm, you've got a good story emerging on your wide receiver group and Geo Sanders, mm -hmm. a young man that I don't want to say has come out of nowhere, but can you talk about Geo and what he's, uh, his journey and what he's been able to contribute to your team? Yeah, walk on, obviously earned a scholarship. And we've been fortunate. I think we've given six of those since I've been, or maybe more than that. I can't, I lost count. But um, was a guy that has wanted an opportunity and, and that's what life's about, giving an opportunity, right? And, and he took advantage of it. Last year, you saw it. It's kind of, I always tell them the story, you know, when I put you on scholarship, first game you went out there, you got knocked out. You couldn't even play <laughs> on a kickoff, right? Or something like that. And I always tease him about that. But um, he's really done a nice job. And, and he's got some, some moxie to him. Game's not too big for him. I mean, he made that one catch going in there and, you know, leaving, leaving his feet. And, and you, you can trust him. And the quarterback's starting to trust him. You know, he's in the slot. He's a nifty guy. He, he can read coverage. He works his way open. Um, he's a really good football player. And, and, and he's earned a scholarship. There's no doubt about it. And now, all of a sudden, he's, the ball's coming to him, right? Quarterbacks know who to get the ball to in certain situations. Hi, I'm Hart Rubino, Devils Digest. Uh, when it comes to the second half, what do you think changed for the offense to be more productive, converting more third down, uh, putting points on the board? What was the difference? Between well, I, I think... For one, you know, you I always say football is the information center on the sideline where you gather information, give it to the players. And then when you get into halftime, it's college football. You get, you know, it's a little longer than pro football. In you know, like pro football, you go in there, time to get locked, turn around and come back out. But you can make some adjustments and you can talk about, you know, what we need to do and 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 I think where the game is, and, and that's a big discussion I had with the team. I said this is critical now. There's a reason that we we, we did what we did. We deferred. So now we third quarter is going to be really big for us to get a drive. And we've moved the ball, but we got to go score a touchdown, right? And they did a nice job of that. Made a big play or two and, and got in the end zone. And I, I thought that was, that, was, that was good to see, right, when you challenge them that way. So uh, that, that's a good thing. We've been pretty good out of halftime so far, right? Even last week we were slow. Week before that we were slow. And then we kind of got going. Um, but it's always good when you can put some points on the board with your first possession in the third quarter. Just gives you up. It, up, it uplifts everybody, right? It uplifts your whole football team. Coach Jordan Hamsworth, 360AZ. Uh, with Utah and USC in a couple of weeks, you know, it might be easy to, to overlook this game for, for fans or for players. What sort of conversations are you having with the, the team right now to make sure you're not? Well, the team's off today, obviously. Um, but um, just when you put the tape on, tape, I'm a, and there's some, there's some cut-ups. I'm going to show them on offensive defense. This is who we're playing, right? And these guys, have, uh, they, they, they play hard. And they're, gonna, they're coming in here to win. I mean, don't make no mistake. And, um, you know, as I said, they, they have a nice offense. They do a nice job on defense. Rallying to the ball, tackling their physical up front, the big old line gets big. So they're they're a good football team. So that's the last thing we can do is is worry about. We need to worry about right now. We need to get another win, right? You just lost the game. You you don't want to start doing that. That's you got to get going. So I, uh, we'll make them understand. Now they got to go play. One thing I can't do is play. I can give them all the information, but I can't play. For all I can do is get them to the game, and then from there, we got to go. Herm, how much time do you spend with the guys looking back, uh, watching film and talking about the Oklahoma State game? And does that change on a weekly basis based on whether it was a win or loss? How much? Uh, look back? It, it, I, I think every situation is a little different. And um, this one was one of looking at the game as far as – not the physical part, not the talent part, just the, the mental thing, being focused. You, you can't lose your focus in football. 
because all it takes is one play. You think, well, I'm relaxing. Well, then, then it happens. And then I said, you know, when, when that happens, not only do you let yourself down, but you let everyone in this room down. You know, that's the great thing about football teams, trust. You know, there's 11 guys that have to do their job correctly. And when one guy messes up, it, it, you know, sometimes it can be like, ah, it's not a big deal. But most of the time it is a big deal. And you can't allow that to happen. And that's what we kind of talked about after the game. Like, when the game was played, you watch yourself on tape. Look how much of that was us. Some of that was us. And nothing to do with the opponent. We can fix that. You can fix the us part, right? You, you can do that. But it's a hard game. you got to stay mentally focused all the time. That's with football, because you never know what play is about to happen. You know, you run in your mind. It's not a big play. It could be. Could be. And that's the uniqueness of the game. All right. Um, Herm, it looked like Stillwater was a little bit of a rowdy crowd. How do you think the team handled it? And um, did you like get to see more excitement from your guys in that type of environment? I thought they were pretty calm. But they have they have a good fan base behind us, and they were making a lot of noise, and and they were good. I mean, that's what you anticipated, you know. I, I enjoy that, you know. I don't hear because I got the headphones on for the most part, but um, you could just feel it. And our players did a good job of of just focusing in on on what was taking place and, and playing. And I thought our coaches did a good job of coaching them on the sideline, you know, because you're getting help from the fan base. They're telling you, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, right? You're in your huddle with your, with your players. So that's kind of unique too. But uh, I thought it was a college experience that, you know, you don't forget. I mean, it's, you, you get it. That's, that's college football. Now, Coach, just uh, Kyle's performance on defense, 16 tackles, interception, tackle for loss, pressure. I mean, what does that do for the defense and, and his leadership or what moving forward, I guess? Well, I think he, you, you just said his leadership. And uh, He's playing with his brother, right? So I know they're very competitive, <laughs> but he had an outstanding game. There's no doubt about that. When you make that many plays, make that many tackles, credited with obviously interception and, and tackle for loss. Uh, it's just fun to watch him from when I first arrived here to now, right? person he's become the leader he's become you know, he's willing to go out there and he'll say things you know when I don't have to say it I can just tell him to him some of the other leaders say you need to go handle it you got the coach go handle it. and uh, that, that's a, you always feel good when you have players like that in your locker room and then, and then when they play good you just wish we would have won because he probably would have got a award or something right if you win a game like that he's probably Pac-12 player maybe the other week right that's that's a shame you know and that, that but for him, probably the most important thing for him is that, you know, yeah, I did all that because we didn't win. We went down there to try to win a football game. Can you address maybe how you guys came out of the game from an injury yeah, standpoint? I, and also your take on a guy like a Jordan that was hurt that came back and played. Yeah, he played about, you know, he played so many plays. I want to say he played almost 30 snaps. He did a nice job really rotating there with DJ uh, and we needed him because it was, they opened it up some, he's a nickel guy, so I had to go in there a dime. But um, for not playing and, you know, and, and going out there and playing that many snaps, that's always hard to get in football condition. Uh, he, he, did a, he did a nice job, but that's what you anticipate. He's a smart player. As far as the injury front, I, I think for the most part, we're okay. And we got a couple guys back. Uh, knock on wood that Nothing happens between the day and tomorrow when I go to, you know, when I go out here and I haven't talked to Jerry yet. I don't want to say anything because I, I did that a week ago and ended up telling, giving you guys some, some not correct information. I'll say that the extent of it. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But right now, I, I look okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, folks. What's happening? All right, who's first? Come on, where Chris at? Go. You know Chris is ready to go. All right, Coach, here we go, right here. Okay. Come on, Craig. Coach just talked about 84 plays for Oklahoma State, just too many for the defense. How did that wear on you guys in the second half? Well, when you had, when you, let's see, we had 48 at halftime. So, you know, you're looking at you almost doubled it. it really, it was a little bit more like the total was like 93 if you count everything. 
it got to us a little bit. Um, you know, we had the 98 yard drive. That was 14 plays. Uh, a couple of things happened in that situation. I think we had two penalties, um, missed two interceptions. When it's all said and done, we could have got off the field that way. So um, I think, you know, once you, once plays get going and you, the momentum starts to catch up with you, uh, fatigue did set in. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, Donnie, Chris Carbon's the source. source. Um, the penalties, you had some pretty costly ones. Yeah. Uh, the roughing the passer yeah. twice, and stuff in the, in the back end. Correct. Just wanted to get your thoughts about those plays and what you thought about collectively. That well, I, it, it, when you look at some of those plays, they really hurt. I mean, they were, and I said it to the guys, I said, you know, those situations really happened at second and nine, third and 10, third and eight. Those, those are particular penalties helped us help them continue drives and we didn't get off the field in those situations. So um, after looking at it and, and really, as you say, observing it, 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 it's something that you can't have. You got to be able to get off the field when it's time to get off the field. And those are longer yardage situations. So uh, we got to, we got to talk about that. No doubt about it. Were you, um, was that surprising to you that, that, that those things happened in that environment? Well, I, I didn't expect us to have penalties in those situations. Absolutely not. Um, but but the ones that were called, you look at what they were called. There was, um, I think we roughed the quarterback. Um, I think we held a couple of times. Um, I think what was the other one? There was another one. Two roughings. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, you, that's composure. You know, when you lose composure, you know, you get tired. Fatigue sets in. And really, it was earlier in the game, so it really wasn't. It was early in the game when those started situations started happening. So. And stuff for that second half a little bit. But, you know, when you look at it, um, as, as I told the defense, I mean, we played, in my opinion, 50 minutes of pretty good football. That last 10 minutes, you know, we, we gave up 14 points and, and we gave up two touchdowns that, you know, you just you, you look at the guys that you say, wow, what happened? Um, you know, we came off a man one time and then the other one, the back snuck out underneath and we we're in a zone. And, and, and that situation you would have hoped didn't occur. But. When it was all said and done, yeah, it, I, fifty minutes, and I, I really look at it that way. It was fifty minutes of good football. You know, it really was. I don't know how you guys saw it, but that's how I saw it. it was fifty minutes of good football, and that last ten minutes, it just got out of hand. Coach Michael Carrington, sideline sports. To piggyback off that too, I mean, I asked him, you're usually the growth from week one to week two. I mean, you talked about obviously the penalties, but creating turnovers being on the field long, like you said, but how do you feel the overall growth was for the defense from the opening game to this game? Well, I'm, I'm still going with the 50 minutes. I mean, that that's how I look at it. 50 minutes, we, we were right there playing pretty good football. So there was a little growth. I mean, and let's look at the first week. We didn't, I'm not going to say we didn't. The competition was a little different. Let's put it that way. And uh, the competition this week, it, it wore, if you don't play 60 minutes of football, there it is. No matter what you say, you know, you got to play a whole game and, and get through that game and, and play hard the whole time. So uh, 50 minutes is that that's that's what's stuck in my mind. And, and I know you guys think I'm repeating myself, but really, that's what stuck in my mind. The whole thing was 50 minutes of pretty good football and in the last 10. We just fell apart. Donnie, any, anything you'd like to see this weekend that you haven't seen as much the first two games? As far as just from your defense in general. Well, I like to get everybody back healthy, number one, and, and see how that plays out. Um, the other thing is what I really would like to see us do is uh, complete the game. You know, when it's all said and done, you got you to gotta finish, man. That good and great defenses, as I told the guys yesterday, great defenses finish games. They don't, they don't give up penalties. They, they, they play hard throughout the down. So that's what I'm going to look for this week, is, as I told them, is, Every play, you have to you have to be able to win every play. You can't lose a play and, and think you can be a great defense. It doesn't happen. Uh, so to answer your question, yeah, I'm looking forward to us playing defense uh, 60 minutes or having – if it's 90 plays, it's 90 plays. If it's 60 plays, whatever number of plays is, we, we got to play and finish them. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hey, Diane, what would you think about your cornerback play? Because it seemed like Keon played some, had some nice plays, Roe had some nice plays. Uh, Tamarcus hadn't played in like a month and maybe it was a little bit rusty, but yeah. what do you think about, because that's an important facet there. When you go back and look at how we played in the secondary, our corners did play decent. I'm not going to say they played great. Uh, like you said, you know, uh, 
TD was rusty. You could tell that, you know, matter of fact, he got tangled up a couple of times and that's where some of the holdings came out. Uh, Roe was surprising. I, 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 I thought he played decent. He gave, he had a holding for me too. And then on the other side, um, Keon, uh, Keon played decent. You know, I don't think when I, when I look at our defense, I don't think anybody played great. You know, I think people graded out in the, between that 88 and 90, 92 percent there were some guys a little bit lower than that um but overall i don't think we played great defense and so um then the safeties look at the safeties you know they they we didn't they didn't have an effect like the corners you know the ball was going outside a lot you know the speed outs and the, uh, the screens and things like that and then uh, the biggest thing i take away though besides the 50 minutes is the quarterback you know we, i sat in there and told you guys what we needed to do one of the things was it's, you know, eliminate the vertical passing game, um, stop the quarterback from extending plays, and stop the run. Well, think about it. We, we didn't do any of those things that to help you win the game. Uh, and I was honest to the guys about it. I mean, hey, th this is – when you start making goals and you're trying to win games, you, you put your hat on some things, and those are the three things that, that I came up with, and we didn't do them. Coach Jordan Hamps, Sports 360 AZ back here. Okay. Um, with Kyle Soley, we can see that the impact he's had on the field the first two games. But behind the scenes, what sort of, you know, leadership things is he doing? To, to he's a captain, man. He, he's our guy. He, he he leads he leads by example. He leads by uh, communication. He leads by what he does in this building every day. Uh, you, you can't say much too too much about him. And he he is the guy. Hey, coach. Uh... Her mentioned when you play a lot of man coverage, you're going to see some flags, especially in the secondary when guys go deep. Did, did you think a lot of those flags were warranted or do you think your guys were getting all some ticky tack calls? <laughs> you're going to ask the old secondary coach that, huh? <laughs> um, hey, you, you know, you got to play by the rules. That's all I can say. You know, there's some that's was questionable, no doubt, um, but there's some that, you know, you, you, you wasn't hard to call either. You know, you get your hands on a guy, you got to get your hands off. So um, there, there was there was a couple of them that you say, wow, you know, that that's you questioned it a little bit. But you know what? You got to play by the rules. I, I, I can't. I'm not going to get in that with officials. I, hey, they don't see a lot, but whatever they see, they see. So who knows what they see? <laughs> that's all I can say. Sorry. That's it? Huh? No? Go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Well, I got to, as, as, as the guy that's in charge, I got to bring the group together and get the morale up, number one. I, you know, I got to be positive and they got to, they got to have some, some success this week in practice and try to keep it simple. Um, there's some things we're going to implement just to, um, Make sure we, you know, we change. You got to, in this game, you got to evolve and change a little bit. So we'll add a couple of wrinkles just to keep their minds going. Uh, but overall, um, we just got to play, you know, we got to play, we got to play a good football. That's all. Play good football and we'll be okay. Uh, and that's, that doesn't matter if we're playing this week or next week or whenever we play, we still got to play good football. 60 good minutes of, you know, running around, hitting people, tackling, catch the ball when you can and, and try not to have penalties. So that that's where I'm looking at. Yeah, they run the ball. They got that big old offensive line that tries to maul you and knock you off. And then they got that quarterback that can pretty accurate. And they got those receivers. Yeah, you know, they're pretty good football team. But not right now. I'm, I'm still, we're still looking at them. I mean, I was just getting ready to, to script some things for uh, uh, first and second down right now. So we haven't even gotten the third down. So it was first and second down and we just went through that. So. Uh, we're trying to get that plan together. You guys good? I love coming in here on Mondays. It's better than coming here on Thursdays. I'm telling you. <laughs> thank you. Coach. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.